a couple of people talk about how much just you love to play. And uh, when you finally get to come back today, is, is it hard at all? You got to wait into the second quarter before you finally get back on the court, or are you able to be patient like that easily? Yeah, um, yeah. I, mean, I knew I knew I was going to be able. To, I was going to play at some point uh, and play a certain amount of minutes. So uh, it all worked out for the best, and um, I'm excited I get to be out there with my teammates again. Bruce Beck with NBC New York. Kevin, did you feel like there was any transitional period just getting back out there, or was it like riding a bike again? Uh, yeah, it's like riding a bike. You, know, you get your your footing right, and you know you just get your rhythm going. And I think my teammates did a great job of looking for me all game. And um, I just wanted to, uh, you know, resort back to that work that I put in, just the shots that I take and practice and shoot around, try to get to those as much as possible to grant gain my rhythm and. And I started to get a little bit more creative as the game, you know, um, started to progress. So it was it was a good start. Hopefully I build on this game and keep going. Greg Logan with Newsday. How do you feel about uh, the strategy for managing your minutes, uh, you know, sitting out the first quarter and then winding up playing 20 out of 24 minutes in the uh, second half and, and basically staying warm? How does that work? out for you, do you think? Uh, I'll just deal with it and adapt to the situation. Um, coach asked me today if I wanted to start or come off the bench, and uh, I felt like it would be a bigger challenge for me to focus in and lock in if I came off the bench, so I just wanted to see how that worked, and if I would have shot bad, I probably would have been pissed that I came off the bench, but I was able to knock down some shots, and uh, but it was, a, it was a solid exercise for me um, to ease back into the swing of things. Christian Winfield with the New York Daily News. Hey, what's going on, Kevin? Welcome back. Um, the, the Suns are, what, second in the West, and I think they just beat the Bucks not too long ago and then also beat the Sixers. Do, do you look at this type of game as, as kind of a measuring stick for where you guys are and, and where you guys need to go, or is it just another game? In the just above? another game. I think they look at us as a measuring stick, too. You know, they're fresh on the scene as an elite team, so, you know, um, this is pretty new to them. Uh, you know, so we wanted to gauge and... and, and, and you know, take that physicality that they bring and that toughness and that quickness that they bring. But um, that's all it was, another another day at the office. Alex Schiffer with The Athletic. Hey, Kevin, obviously a 24-year, 28 in the uh, second half. Just what what do you think got going for you guys offensively? It seemed like even though you were hitting just, I mean, Blake got going in the second half, a few other guys, just once you, got, once you started hitting them. <clears throat> I felt like the whole first half we were down like 12 shots. Like they had more shots than us the whole first half. And I think we cut that down in the second half. Um, you know, by not turning the ball over, not taking quick shots. Um, you know, so we, you know, early on, they even if we made a shot, they were pushing it out uh, for the break. And they got easy layups and, and, and three-pointers because we're not focused. So I think we just kept the ball in our hands, made good shots, made good reads, and, you know, was able to get back into it. Dana Jacobson with CBS News. Hi, Kevin. I'm going to take you away from today's game just a little bit. Curious about a program you guys have had going on all season with Jean-Michel Basquiat and the uniforms you've had, the court, what you knew about him maybe before the program or learned, and then what you think of using a sports arena to introduce an artist like him to people. Yeah, I mean, he was a very impactful artist um, and a lot of, you know, had a lot of fans throughout his day, and I think his uh, honor for us to represent him and his family and where he comes from um, through our jerseys and on our court. And, you know, a lot of guys say they want to they want to try a white jersey next year, uh, the Basquiat jersey. So, I'm, we, you know, it's a part of who we are. And, you know, Biggie, Basquiat, Jay-Z, you know, guys like that, artists like that really are in our DNA as a team and as an organization and as a city. So it feels good to represent a guy like that. Had you known him, of him before? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously yeah. huge fans. Um, read, you know, knew his story. Tried to look for some of his arts. Hard to get. Uh, but <laughs> um, it's good that we can represent him in some way and have our own little art piece on our jerseys as well. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Steve Lichtenstein with WFAN. Hey, Kevin. First of all, good luck at the Oscars tonight. Uh, I want to ask about Thank you. Blake Griffin and what you are seeing from him and how he's impacted the team? Well, his IQ is through the roof. He knows how to play the game of basketball on both levels. Uh, I mean, both sides of the floor and on all three levels on offense, you know, in the paint, um, can knock down that floater in the mid-range and can make threes now. So 
we just need Blake to continue to be aggressive, to score the basketball and make plays. And tonight was one of those nights. And he's, he's getting comfortable each and every game. Last question, Matt Brooks with Nets Daily. Hey, Kevin, just curious about the pick-and-roll defense tonight. It felt like you guys were switching a little bit more just to sort of take away those mid-range shots for uh, Chris Paul and, mm-hmm. and Devin Booker. Just curious if that was the process and what you felt like that did for you guys. Yeah, I mean, we didn't, uh, you know, when they come out, CP loves to shoot, you know, uh, when your bigs are on the drop and you know, off that pick and roll. And that's that quick offense. Sometimes they get down 10 to 12 points. CP would come up pick and roll and just pull up and they'll get them back into the game. And I think we took some of that stuff away and made them dribble probably five or six more dribbles after he come off the pick and rolls now. So the rhythm was off for him a little bit. And they still great players, and they made shots over top of us, but we'd rather them try to shoot over top of us to get easy baskets in that pick and roll.